Hello everyone, welcome back. So let's just continue with the front-end implementation. And yeah, we've been able to resolve the email field issue. So now if we try to sign up, we are going to have an error. So let's let's actually see the error we get. So let me use this user. So email this field is required. So just to try it. And the reason why we are getting the content listed this way is because of the object we look through so it is try it so it's literally going to just output all our data the way it's coming from the back end all right so let's go back to the code to resolve this and all we just need to do is to include the email field so let's do that so on the odd form so let's make sure the the email field is available for view if we are accessing the register okay so let's let's just use the input container since it has the margin top attached to it. So the class name is still the same thing. So the place of that will now be email address. Then the value is going to be press.data.email. The name is going to be email as well. So we don't need to do any other things anywhere else. All this works the way it is. So we don't need type we don't need auto complete so it's also required so we only want to show this when we are accessing using the when the props login is not active so what i mean here is when we access the out from using from the login site we send in login as true so we can just say if not props login then we can have this All right so that should work so if we go back to our content now hopefully if we are still serving let's see okay it's still complaining let's wait for it All right so i think we should be available now All right so as we can see here is what we have so the username the email address and the password so let's have this data field in now so let me just use this email address then the password All right so let's register and it should still automatically log in as we used to. So we are back to how we were and now we can proceed with the authentication flow. All right, so we can just do away with the register and login now. So the flow for the authentication is actually to check if first the token still exists and actually also check if the token is still valid. And the way to do this is to try and make a call to the user profile endpoints. So this makes use of the token and if the token is not valid, then it returns an error. So let's get the URL for that. So that was what we actually checked the URL for the other time. So we'll copy and paste, then we define the profile URL. And this is also giving us the chance to just get the user profile as it's logging in. So we have the profile right so back to the auth controller now we can make this an async because we want to make some requests and okay let's let's get this so user profile so let's make it a constant so user profile plus to await so we are waiting Azios and La, I think we have that defined. I don't know why it's not bringing an option for that. So let's just go back to the login and copy the import for that. Right, so we have it here. Then we come back here and place it. So we really don't need the error handler here. We really don't need to show any undo. So if there's any error, we just redirect to the log and login screen. So we should have the Azure handler here, if everything goes well. Yeah, and the Azure handler takes in the method. In this case, it's going to be a get. Then the payload, no payload. The URL is going to be the profile URL. And that's automatically imported. So this time around, we need to pass in the token. So currently now, what we have on our token is just a string of both the access and the refresh. 
So we need to get the access from that. And we can do that by, so let's just define the variable. So const access equals to token or rather JSON dot pass. So remember when we are storing this token, we stringify it. So to return it back to the normal JSON format, we need to pass it. Okay. So we pass the token now. And from there, after passing, we can get the access token. All right. So that's the, we have the URL, we have the method, now the token. So remember, based on how I've defined the handler, if you specify the token, then it includes it. And if not, it doesn't include it. So now we can now specify the access token here. And I think that should be all. So we can cache the error, even though we are not going to do anything with it. So cache E and actually do nothing. Then finally, we can check if we have the user profile. So in case we don't have the user profile, then we want to redirect to the login page. So we can do that by saying props dot history dot push login. All right. So and if we have the user profile for now, let's just console log it. However, the major deal is to just and uh, set the checking to be false. So that means we are done checking and we actually have what we want. So let's console log the user profile first. So user profile. So let's see. So imports, import as an issue. So import in body. Okay, let's, let's check that out. All right. So let's put, let's take this up. Right, so we've taken that up and it looks like everything is okay. So I think we actually created our accounts using this user. Let's let's check our console to ensure that things are working well. So let's log in now. Okay, so there was an issue. So for O theory, so that was the error we had. So let's see. Let's let's take a look. So authentication credentials were not provided. That's bad. We actually sent in the authorization, which is this. So I wonder why it's saying authorization credentials were not provided. So let's look through to see the error we are having. So I went on debugging and there was quite an issue. And yeah, let's go through what I was able to resolve. So by default on our backend, we actually did not have any uh, authentication uh, tool attached. So usually on the settings part, so let's quickly go to the settings. On the REST framework, we usually have something like default authentication class. Because we are not using any authentication tool, we didn't have that. And as such, our authentication did work well. So, well, since we uh, having the custom uh, implementation, by the way, so it makes things quite easy. So on the custom, so this is the is authenticated custom. So on the custom, I was able to actually undo the authentication flow. So this is what I have. So from user control dot views, I created a decode JWT function there, and I was able to get the bearer token from here. So I just assigned that to user for now. So the code GWT, then request. So from request, you can access your authorization token with this meta, then authorization token. So within the, the code um, function, this is what we have. So it takes in the bearer. So we check if there is nothing here and it, it returns none. And by default, when we return none, it just returns and um, that our authorization token was not taken. So I was able to extract the token from the bearer because this contains bearer then space, the token itself. So I was able to extract the token with this um, snippet. So the bearer, then the first removal of the first uh, seven characters. So then I was able to decode this. So the secure part of decoding is that you have the secret key, which you've used to encode it, encode it in the first place. 
So I was able to decode this using JWT that code, then token, then the secret key. So with this particular line, if the if the code is already expired, you it's going to trigger it. Um, yeah, that's it. So if the code is then we try to just get the active user, which we are able to get from here. So return custom user dot object, and if there is if this user does not exist, then return none. So this is what I was able to do with the the code function. And back to the custom method. So if no user, then return false. That's like the content we want to add here. So if there is user, we just want to set the reset the request dot user to be user. So that way. It's no longer going to be an anonymous user, but the current user, and we can go ahead with the regular flow we want to have here. So that's that's that that will actually make our uh, authentication work. So aside from that, I also made made some other uh, updates. So on the user view, so currently we wanted to use the uh, user profile. However, I realized that. That's really not the best place to use it. So instead, I created a me view. So what this does is, it's going to return the authenticated user. So when you call on the endpoint, so here is the endpoint, me, just me. So it becomes user slash me. So when you call on that endpoint, you it just returns the authenticated user, the youth profile actually. So if there is no profile, it returns an empty object. And that has to try it. So by the way, I have deployed this and it's right on the server. Also, I have updated the repo. So I will link the repo, the updated version of the repo in the description as soon as I'm done with the, with the video. All right, so let's go back to our code and continue from where we left off. All right, so let's log in again. And actually, this time around, it should be okay, okay? So as you can see, we are now redirected back to the um, login screen again. So finally, let's come back to the code authentication. So since we are not returned back to the login, we can as well say set checking equals to false. All right. So yeah, and we should have our chat screen presented to us. Okay, so that's literally what we have now. However, on the our authorization token expires every five minutes. Okay, so that's the way we've, defi we've defined it. And the reason is that we want to be able to actually see why we make use of the refresh token, what the refresh token is used for. Okay, so let's have the implementation for that. So by the way, the, this will always be running to check that we are still authenticated and whatever thing, whatever thing we do, this checks that we are still authenticated. So let's, let's implement the refresh. So now if there is no profile at this point, then we can still have one more check before we actually push to login. Okay. So if there is no profile at this point, we can still run one more check. So the check will be to get refresh token. So after doing that, we then we check this check out states. And that's literally what we do. So const. So we can now have this as another await as use this. Then let's let's just put in the information we have here. So we don't need token for this. And I'm not sure. I think this is going to be a post. And the URL will be the refresh URL. So let's define that. We can do that. So helper. Okay, so let's, let's get it to refresh. Okay, it has not registered it yet. So let's just define it here. All right, refresh URL. Okay, we can make use, make use of it here. Then it takes in data. Okay, I can't really remember the the key for the data. So let me quickly open the, the backend to verify that. All right, so it takes in the refresh uh, token. So let's define it here. So refresh.
So refresh will be the, so from here we got the access. So it looks like getting the access from here is actually not the best deal. So let's, let's convert this to token. So we defined that already here. Yeah? So let's just reuse it. And this time around, we are taking the whole of the token. And from here, we can get the access. So token.access. Then from there, we can get token.refresh. Right, so this is the data for the refresh. Then also we can as well check here. Dot check. Still we are not actually doing anything. But now we can now make a final validation. So if get new access, then we want to reroll the the check the check odds function. Else we can now push to the login screen. So, so that is if the refresh token we provide we provided was bad or something was invalid, then we can route to the login. So this way we can actually remain logged in forever because the refresh token is set to expire in three sixty five uh, days. So the only way we can we will need to re-log in is either we clear our storage or we log out. Okay. By the way, we didn't implement the logout URL, so we might probably want to do that later on. So props dot history dot push. Then we want to push to login. Right now, since we have the new access, so by the way, the new access will be the access token as well as the refresh token as a new refresh token so let's print this out so console.log so the get new access so the dot data let's get the data so instead of setting check here so we can just say if not user profile so that way is going to come down here and who knows maybe our, our token has expired already i think it should have expired we've expanded five minutes already Okay, so our token was defined as a const. So let's change it to let. Okay. So let's check our console if there's anything. Nothing. So let's let's make this not so that we get to see the refresh token. Right, so as you can see, we got a new access as, as well as a new refresh. So what we can do is we can use our local storage to set it up again so we can can have it like since we have a new access and new refresh so we can just say local storage dot set item then the name of our, our token so token name then json dot stringify then the, the data we just obtained. Then finally, we can just call on the login function again. So check out, so we can do that, check out states. And that will try the process again. And this time it already, uh, and this time it has a new access. So it should be okay. And as you can see, we are logged in. All right, so our authentication is working. And now we can move on to working with uh, a shared screen. So currently the user does not have a profile and we actually want the user to set up his profile before proceeding. So there is this screen. So this is the this is the screen for that. Since so and um, so the check we want to make is if the user does not have any profile data, we want to present this screen first. So um, when we do that, we don't want the user to be able to close it until he actually updates his profile. Okay, so let's quickly work on that. So back to our state management, let's, let's work on this. So we have the user detail. So we are going to store the profile data here, which we currently don't have. So let's do that. 
So here is the user profile. So let's print it once again. Console.log user profile.data. So as you can see, the result is empty. Oh, okay. So there is a change we need to make. So we are no longer using the profile URL, but we want to use the me URL. So the one we just created. So let's define that. So that we will get the information for the login user. So change this to me. I saved. Then we can go back to the alt controller. Get access to the me URL. We don't need the profile URL anymore. So let's remove it. So we can change this with the main URL. Alright, so we are locked out and probably because the the token we have is invalid or something. So let's try and log in again. Let's see if we still have any issue. Alright, so we are cool. Alright, so we'll still resolve this. I, I can see where this is coming from. So but so let's still hold on of that. So the User profile is an empty object. Okay. So we can now set, update our user details with this user profile information. So to do that, we need the use context, which we've already gotten a hold of before. So we can now say const. So we want to access the state. Then from the state, we want to access the user details. Okay. I don't think okay we need the dispatch as well actually we need the dispatch not the user details so dispatch all right so it goes to use from tests then stop okay so for some reason we are not getting reference to the stop all right so let's just let's import it directly so import store i think we export it with the regular export so from state management okay i don't think we have other story there okay state management then stop okay so i think that should give us the stop then we can now dispatch the user details so we can now from here dispatch the user detail so dispatch so the type is going to set user detail set user detail okay so for some reason too we are unable to get that okay it's actually user detail action Let's see if we have access to that. All right, so we got that. Then the payload is going to be what we just obtained. That is the user profile dot data. So now we have access to the user profile dot data. So back to the chat screen. I think that's our home. So to actually confirm if we do not have content so let's let's first of all get access to the user detail here and to do that we need access to the use contest so we get a hold of it there then we need the state so const the state then we need the user details curious the user details or user details Okay, is detail and not details. Okay, I think we are fine with this. So now we have the use contest, then the stop. Right, so this time around it got it. So on the use effect, so we can have a flag here that determines if we want to show the profile or not. Actually, I think that's it there. So show profile or set show profile. Okay, so we can have our use effect here. Let's get that one also. So let's remove this. I think that came in by mistake. 
So use effects. Then on the use effects function, so we want to check if the user, so if the user has, so first, since the user detail keeps changing, we need to define like a regulator here. So const user detail. So let's just use the small letter for this. Set user detail. So equals to use state. Because there is a saying in React that you should have a single uh, source of truth. So we want to have a single source of truth for this. So by default, the user detail is an empty object. And yeah, so that's what is going to be by default. So from the reducer, let's confirm this. Okay, so here it's an empty string. Actually, you have to be an empty object. So this was as a result of our initial simple logic test. But now we can return it to its rightful um, state. So now we can check. So since we are defining this, we want to check whenever the user detail changes. Okay. So I remember use effect takes in effector as well. So we can undo this here. So if user detail, the one we currently have, is not equivalent to our state, so user detail, then that's when we want to actually set the state. Set user detail equals to the user detail here. Right, so we've been able to establish a single source of truth here. Now, the next thing we want to do is to determine the state of our show profile. So let's have another flag. So this flag will be able to will be used to determine if we can close the profile or not. So if we have to uh, set the profile or not. So profile. So let's use something to match. So closable. Set profile closable. Right, so by default it's true, so it's closable. And yeah, we can make our check from here. Okay, and we want to make our check whenever we have the changes as well. So if user detail so if not user detail dot first name. So I think that should come in by default. So we can have this. So if not user detail dot first name, then we want to set show profile to be true. Also, we want to make closable false. Set profile closable to be false. All right. So let's see how this functions. Okay, so if we try to reload, we actually get this prompted up. Okay, so let's quickly implement the the closable icon. So let's find the user profile. Okay, so this is the profile model. So closable. Let's let's create a attribute for that. Closable equals to profile closable. Then we can go back to the profile model to do that. So here is the close icon. So we only want to show this close icon when the props.closable is true. So so props.closable and and then this. Alright, so let's go back. So now we are not seeing this. So we can't actually do anything else until we update our profile. Okay, I think that makes sense. So let's let's update our profile and call it a day. So in next episode, we can move on to creating the, to, to getting the list of users. All right, so let's quickly update our profile. So there is only one issue here, and the issue is 
we don't have our user ID. Okay. We don't have our user ID. And we actually need it because we can't create our profile without having the user ID. Because that's what we want to use to update the profile. Unless we can actually update the profile without using it since we have access to the token. So let's quickly confirm this from the backend if we can if we are using the token to update our profile. So create or update profile. So let's check the views. Then the profile view. So to create a profile, so get query. All right, so we do not have, so the user profile view is more like a generic. We really didn't do anything with the create or update method. So as such, we need the user ID. So if we go to the serializer for the user profile, so we actually need the user ID from here. So what we can do to actually make this easy for us is we can come down to the views once more, the new view, then we can return. So we can actually return the user ID here. So instead of returning an empty dictionary, so we can say data equals to user ID, or we can just say ID. Okay, I think user ID will be okay. So actually, let's have it as user. Let's have the user content here. So user, then the ID. So because that's what we are going to have when we get access to this eventually. So let's have this as user into ID. Then the press requests the user dot ID. That's all we need. Right. So let's let's update this and push again. And then we have access to the user ID there. Alright, so I've updated and pushed that. So let's confirm what we have on our user profile, user detail now. To see that we actually get the user ID we require. Okay. So let's go back to home. And let's actually print out the content. So console.log user detail All right so if we go back to this we should have this so the user id2 and that's all we need to actually update our profile update or create our profile all right so let's go back to the profile component so i created a separate component for this and that's under the home components so here is the user avatar the chat bubble, the profile model. So here's the profile model and the one we want to work with. All right, so since we are having our function separate, we can as well have our state here and actually perform whatever we want to do here. So let's start by putting this, putting all this within a form. So let's just have all the inner, all this actually be in a form. Right, so I don't think this should affect anything. Nothing. Okay, so this, so we have two ways of actually getting access to the user profile here, user data actually. So you see that we access the use contest, the contest store, or we can just send it directly from the home. And I think this should be easier because it's just a single shared relationship. So let's have it as user detail. Was to the user detail here. Alright, so that's done. So back to the profile model. So we can define our state for this. So we have const profile data. So this is going to be props dot user detail so the user detail we sent from the home this is what is going to be here so what we are trying to achieve here is if we have our profile detail then it's going to automatically just fill this right so let's get access to the stage from here 
use states. Yeah, and I think this should work well since whenever there is any changes on the on the profile, it's going to automatically update this. All right, so that I think this is okay. So the next thing we want to define is the loading. I'll just say submit, submitted, set so equals to use state. By default, it's going to be false. All right, so let's create our submit function. Const submit. It's going to take e, which will prevent. So e dot prevent default. Right. And yeah, again, our uh, unchanged function. So instead of recreating, let's just go to the alt controller. Not alt controller, but the login to copy the unchanged function from okay. there. So we don't need to start reinventing those wheels. And sometimes we can just make this a generic function that you can recall. But I think it's just sim too simple to make a generic function. Right, so back here on change, then we set profile data equals to the existing profile data. Then we spread it. So this is what we have here. So now back to the... So we will replace this background image later on. I can't even remember the structure. So we'll do that later. Then, okay, we are going to implement this as well. So to the input field itself, so on the input, so the name is going to be first name, like we have on the bucket, so that it tallies with whatever we've, we've uh, replaced the profile data to be here. So first name, then the value equals to profile data dot first name then the unchange function equals to unchange so finally we can have it to be required so we need a few required before you can save so let's just duplicate this for the other fields so we duplicated let's replace with the necessary content so this becomes last name and yeah, we change it as well from the profile data. Then this become caption. Again, we change. Then this becomes about. Also, we change. All right. So we want this button to be type of submit. Then we want to disable it when we are loading. So when we submitted. Right, so like we add for the login, so let's let's come back to the login. So let's copy the content we have here. So let's just copy this whole thing. We are going to handle the rest. So on components, so in here, so props. So it's good, not good to cross the loading, but submitted. So we have loader which we've not imported. So let's do that. Yeah, we've done that now. And this should just be so. Let me check what we have here again. I think update so we can decide if it's update or let's just have it as update, All right? So if we go back to so use state is not defined, let's see why we've not done that. Okay, so we have this as user states instead of use states. All right, so we are back here, and if we try to update, we've not we've not attached the submit function. So let's do that. Right, so we've attached the uh, submit form on the form to the submit function. So if we try to update now we will be required to fill in here. So let's just have some content. And also we can just remove the default picture we have here, or we can replace with maybe a default null picture. But I'll just, I'll remove it so that the user is, is triggered to actually provide the picture. 
So, by the way, providing a picture is not compulsory because from the DB it's set to null. So, let's actually have it have a background color so that the user is aware that he needs to provide a picture there. So, image con. So user avatar. So image now let's have the background color. Actually it was set here. I don't know why it wasn't set on the Alright, so let's have it for version two. Okay. Let's just have it here. So let's all right, and this will be for the profile. All right, so let's see if what this leads to. All right, so this is what it leads to. That's not cool. Let's say document five percent. Okay, I think this is actually better. So let's quickly update for the other ones because it seems twenty percent is just too much. All right, and we are done with the star. So let's get back. All right, so here is what we have. So first, let's implement updating the profile and yeah, so, okay. So this is just filling, we've not really implemented the um, posting. So let's do that. So on the submit, let's have the set loading, set submitted equals true. So let's have access to the profile. Okay, so user profile, so const profile equals to Azure's handler. So let's make this an async so that we can await it here. Right, so from here we have the type to be a post, so it's depending now. So we want to determine if it's a post or a, a patch depending on the state. So we don't want to use this state for this because it might have changed. Oh, okay. So I think since we have the required function here, we can as well just use this. Actually, I don't think that's proper because if we set value here, then we can check if it's not continuing on again. So what we want to do is we want to use props. So we are certain that this has not changed. So props.userdetail dot first name so if the first name is available that means the user profile already exists so if this is available then we want to have it as a patch request else we want to have it as a post request so that's it about that then the url is going to be the profile url and again we want to determine if it's a patch or a post so we can append the current uh, user the user ID okay so plus so props that user details dot first so if it's first then it's patch then we can just ignore this so we just have a string here however if it's a post then we can have it as slash so slash then we have the props dot user detail dot user dot id so the one we obtained the other time so we are getting it from here then finally we want the data so we want the data the data is going to be the profile data so finally so now we have uh, two situations here. So if the if it's a post, then the profile data is going to contain the user ID. So let's add that by default so that we don't have to start manipulating it here. So we have this as user ID. So prop data then user underscore ID equals to props dot user detail dot user dot id and if that's the case we really don't need this much 
contents here. We can as well just say profile data dot user ID. I think that's a saving cooler. Dot user underscore ID. All right, so confirm that it matches. All right, so we have the profile data here. Then I think for some reason, we removed the token requirement from profile. However, I realized that we actually need to have it here. Right, so we need to get the token here. So let's just create a function to undo this under helper. Yeah, we can just create a function export get token. So this token, the reason why I'm creating a separate function is to also verify when the token has expired. So this one also can serve as a point to get the token. So what I'm saying in essence is get token, we have access to the token by default. So to do this, let's just go back to the auth controller so that we don't have to repeat so much. So let's get the token information from here. So let's put it here. So this is export const. So let's to let token equals to local storage dot get token, token name, which we don't have here. So let's see if we can import it, token name. Okay, so that's imported now. So we have the token name here. So first, let's check if the token is still valid by making the regular uh, call. So come down here. So let's just copy this whole thing. So post user profile await this. So we are not really doing anything. So if the user profile is correct here, we can just return the token from here. So return token dot access from here. However, if the so let's get the main URL from here. Main URL. So every other thing seems to be okay. Then refresh your Right, so we have every other thing. So now let's also undo this. So here we update the token again. Then we really don't need to check out states. So instead, we just return the new access. So return this dot access. Else we want to just log out and redirect to the login. So we yeah. have so actually our logout can even be done better. So currently what we have is just push to login, even though the token is still on the um, local storage. So what we can have instead is we can create a separate logout function. So it's going to be export const logout. So it's going to take in props. Because we don't have access to the props there. And I think that's just going to be all. Then all that's going to do is to local storage dot remove item. Then the token name. Then we can now push to the login view. So let's do that. Right. So we can as well just make this log, log out. So log out. Then it sends in the props. And the same thing for the other one here. Right. So back to the helper. So with this new info, that means the get token we take in props. And here we just call on the log out. Okay, and it's imported. All right, so I think this should work. So back to the home component. So token now will be get token and takes in the props. And that should be it. All right. So, well, the issue here is the props that we are sending to profile mode out here does not necessarily contain the 
history or the information needed for the logger to actually push to the login screen. So what we can do is to come back to the home page and actually spread out the props. So dot 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 props. So that way it contains all the information about the history and other things we need. So get token here. So I think we have all the content we need for the profile. So the next thing we want to do is we want to check if profile. And before we check, let's set submitted to be false. At this point, we know we've done something. Also, let's let's cache whatever error we have. So we actually need a generic um, notification. So something that just pop out when we have an error. So E equals to, so for now, let's just alert the error. Error and lab then E. So set submitted because the false. And I think that's all we need to do. Okay. So, okay, aside from that, we also need something to allow us um, close our um, modal now since we can, we've not since we've set up our profile so we should be able to close it so let's just say close set closable so all i'm just doing is to make it closable now so set profile closable to be true and yeah back to the home components so after this, so we want to check if profile, so that is if we are successful with that. So we want to add the props that set closable equals to true. So we already don't need to put true, we've already defined what we need to do there. So finally, let's print out our profile so that we can update the contest. So profile the data. All right. Okay, get token is not exported from helper. I wonder why. Export consts. All right, so we have a different error. Cannot use keyword await outside async function. All right, so let's make this async. But that's weird actually because we will need to await the token. So let's 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 modify our own component a little. So token. So let's let's come out here. Token. const token equals to await get token since it's now making request on the backend as well All right so i think everything is okay now All right so proof our data before initialization of components so this should be spreading this and not that undefined ID, cannot read ID of undefined. All right, so there's okay, okay, so I get where this error is coming from. So there is possibility that the user ID does not exist at some point, however, we are trying to get this by default. So, what we can do from the, from the um, home side is to actually make this whole thing visible only when we have the user content so only when the user detail is available so by default let's have it as null so let's have it as empty and by version of this let's have the reducer side to as null okay as starter so that we can still continue with the flow here so what we want to now do is if not okay so if not user detail then we want to return 
the loading. So the loading we have on our auth controller, we still want to continue with it here. So let's just get this center off and return it here. Okay. So loader not defined. Yeah, let's define it. Loader. All right. So let's go back. First name of null. All right. So I wonder why. So I think I get what's going on. That's JavaScript issue for you. So let's have this defined as null as well. Because I'm I'm sensing that this is regarded as undefined while that is not. So let's see again. So it looks to be okay. Now let's pull up our console to monitor all activities. So let's let's update. Let's see if we have issue. So method is not accepted or data not an object. So let's see what happened there. So we can also make the check. So if token, if not token rather, then we just log out out into props then uh, we can now say token equals to json dot pass into token right so let's see this again let's log in again all right so looks like the token work this time so we got the token so now we can proceed with the with the saving our profile. So let's remove this too. Right. So once again, so method not accepted or data is not an object. So let's see that. Let's see where that is coming from. Okay, we are unable to monitor that. Let's reload once more and actually see. Let's see what is going on. Okay, so not type but method. So it was a typographical error. So let's do tests. Right, so again, let's update. All right, another issue entirely. To look at hosts. I don't know why it's posting to look at hosts though. Let's see. So profile URL. Okay, so I'm curious. So I think we have to bring this out. So let's just say const URL equals to. So that way we can actually see what is wrong. So this becomes URL. So again, also let's add the method out. So const method. And yeah, also we can replace with the, replace this with just method. Okay, so let's let's print out, let's load the URL and see what is there. Okay, so for some reason the URL is completely empty. So that is why we are getting the okay, so let's do some debugging. Let's return and yeah, let's just have this and see what we have. Okay, so we got our content plus. Okay, I think that's possible. Okay, let's have this change from the beginning. So we can now say if props dot user detail dot first name then just nothing else so else we can have the user id which is okay so which is this then profile data dot user underscore id okay so let's see again if and there's possibility that we might actually run into an issue with this. So let's actually see what is going on. Alright, so I think this time around we got ourselves all that we need. So let's remove this and proceed. So let's let's put this control C, control V. Method post not allowed. 
that's another thing. Mm -hmm. uh, this is really weird this time around. So my God, post not allowed. Why are we posting to? So actually, this should come first. Then this should come second. So if if browse that username, then that's when we want to update. And if not, we want to just create rights. So let's test again. Alright, so this time around we are successful, even though we didn't get the the right view we should have as an update. But as you can see, we can now close this. And next, if we load, we should be able to just have this without the user profile. Alright, so we are going to stop here. We've spent quite a lot of time. And yeah, I'm really sorry the we are taking quite a lot of time this time around. And reason being is we have spent quite a lot of episodes trying to just build this simple app. So we are currently on episode 25 and I'm looking at we just running up even if possible with the next episode. Okay, so let's bear with the situation and yeah, that is it for today. And in the next episode, hopefully we'll be able to complete our chat app and deploy it out there. Thanks everyone and bye.